Lamar, you say there is only one reason the defendant, Mr. Butler, has doubts he fathered your one-year-old daughter, and that's because of his manipulating wife. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Butler, you argue you've been told on multiple occasions by the plaintiff herself that you are not her child's father. Yes, Your Honor. You state that Ms. Moore has fabricated paternity claims in an effort to win you back. <laughs> Ms. Moore, what? has Mr. Butler been involved in your child's life in any way? If you're talking about diapers and wipes, that's it. That's not, that's not a father to me at all, period. Only diapers and wipes. That's it. All right, so look, let's talk about why we're here. Mr. Butler, you obviously have doubts. Yes, Your Honor. What are those doubts? She told me I'm not the baby daddy. So she told you that? One time was because he was harassing me, him and his so called quote unquote wife. So you admit, Ms. Moore, you told him you're not the child's father? One time. What happened? How did that conversation happen? It's happened because she told me I'm not the dad. She told me I'm not the father. Why would she tell you that? The baby don't even look like me. <laughs> now, your wife is jumping out of her chair. I guess she knows the story better than you do. Which she always most got wives something to say. do, huh? She um, always got something to say. Come on in here. Miss Harrison, it is. Your husband says he was told by Ms. Moore he was not the father Honor, of the child. Your Honor, on numerous times. One time. Numerous times. One time. That's a lie. Harassment. Really? Harassment? Harassment. I ain't never you harassed and your you so a day. Husband. Whatever. Whatever. That part. Your Honor, that I was part. getting my hair that done. That part. I was getting my hair done at one particular time when she was on the phone, he had her on speaker, and she told him, You're not the dad. You don't have to do nothing for this baby. Harassment. You're yeah, right. You heard it You're yourself. Right. I heard Damn. it myself. Not only she that, did hear these it. texts right here. She Your did Honor. hear what it. Is it. Jerome, will you pass me that evidence, please? She said her and her husband, her husband does a good job of Fiance, taking care. Fiance, and he do. No, and that's, he do. that's a text that do. was sent and he do. to me. He has been a, mu a much better father than Quincy. So, Trust that. This evidence that's been presented says, from Miss Carter, my husband do a good job keeping me and his, his baby. baby Exactly, because he stepped up. He stepped up, and my daughter is going to call him dad. He stepped up. Quincy's not around. Quincy never been around. <laughs> He never been around. Miss Harrison, you're saying this evidence, this text proves you believe it's her husband's child? I believe personally, Your Honor, it doesn't. If to me, I believe that the conception dates are all wrong because how can you tell somebody they're pregnant in December but you have the baby in July? Excuse me, correction. I was seven and a half weeks, December 11th. Okay, but you would December not have had 11th. your baby. You December would have not 11th. have had your baby. But did I have July. sex with you? No. Did I have sex with you? No, you didn't. You're not a man. You're not a man. You're not a man. I have sex with you. And you have been messing with him for almost two years. Period, point blank. Do you believe it? You married it. You tell me. Miss Moore. Miss Harrison. It's classic, right, Jerome? It's always two women going at it over some silent, <laughs> nothing to say man. Back and forth. But it wouldn't even be now listen, her going listen, at it. Listen, listen, listen. What we're going to do here today is get down to the bottom. We're going to figure Thank out how you. we Please got do. here. Thank you. We're going to get do. the truth, and we're going to figure out where we Thank go you. from here. Thank you. But what we aren't going to do as ladies is degrade ourselves, mm -hmm. act a fool up in here, all she got and we're not going to be on. disrespectful and use disrespectful language, all right? <laughs> I want to understand your story. So listen, let's now talk about why we have the doubt, because that's why we're here. Ms. Harrison, you say the conception dates don't add up. Mm -mm. Now, please, explain to the court why you believe that's true. Because if you told him in December that you were pregnant, your baby would have been born in September, because my daughter is September 22nd. And so... She needs to learn her math. Go back to school. And That's so, what hold you need on, to do. Moore. Go back Ms. to school. Moore. Really? Moore. Explain to me, why is she wrong? Because when I got pregnant, I had left. Quincy was doing so much cheating. I found he, our, his last two babies and my baby and his last baby is two weeks apart. I found that out. I found that out on his cell phone. And I found it out because he had his last girlfriend's EBT card. The baby looked just like Quincy. Now, if she can't do the math, that's her problem. She needs to sit down. 
December 11th. The doctor told me I was seven and a half weeks. So that means November. November so that, then? And the baby was born... July. July? July 26. 26th. I had two dates. July 26th or August 5th. I had an okay, emergency so C-section on July 26th. Was Quincy anywhere to be around? No. No. You tell me. When he came, he came with bags. When Quincy always come, Quincy always come with bags. That's you just like me. the beginning of this month. Quincy came with bags. When you say he, he came with stay. bags, what does yes. that mean? When Quincy come with bags, he thinks he's about to stay. He's a leech. He is a leech. And his so-called wife told me that over the phone. It's never... It's, it's always if I call Quincy, it's always her. Her, her, her. Because and I'm his like, wife and I don't one, care. one, one, one. But that, that doesn't make sense, though. I'm his baby mother, and I have to talk to him, not you. I didn't make no baby with you. It don't matter. And He's married to me. And, I and the money that. comes from and me. I said, okay, so can at the I end get of the you day. for child support then? Since he on SSI, can I get you for child support then? Whatever you want to do, baby, exactly. go for and it. Exactly, and I'm going to do it. Okay, and go I'm gonna for do it. it. And I need that. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When you first found out you were pregnant, Miss Moore, Correct. did you tell Mr. Butler? Did he no. accept no, no, the no, fact? No, I didn't tell him. You did. My mother told Butler him. Told okay, me. I, heard her I want to talk did. to your mother, ma'am. Please that. stand. Please state your name for the court. Katrina Gutter. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. So, you told Mr. Butler that your daughter was pregnant. I called him and I, I said, you know, my daughter is pregnant, and she. He goes. What do you mean? I said, she's pregnant. And he says, well, I'm gonna be there for her. I'm gonna take care of her. I'm gonna take care of the baby. All no. of a sudden... No, Your Honor. There is no, no Quincy in no. sight no more. Mr. Butler, do you remember having this conversation with Miss... No, Ms. I didn't. <sighs> no, you I never didn't. did? No. So, what facts, evidence, knowledge do you have that Ms. Moore was sleeping with anybody else but you at the time? Another dude. That's Wrong. all I can say. Wrong. What, who is the other guy? Another dude. While me and Mr. Butler was in the midst of our relationship... I one wish somebody his, would get to the answer to his my friend, question. One of his friends called him and told him that, the, uh, that she had they another have man. They have no evidence. All right. So my once his friend she... told you she was sleeping with somebody else, you thought what? This baby might not be mine? Yes, ma'am. Miss Moore, let me ask you something. You say the birth was very difficult, Tell me what happened that day. When I went into labor, I actually went into labor. I started having labor pains on the 25th. On the 26th, my blood pressure went sky high. When my blood pressure went sky high, my doctor came in and told me that my baby heart rate was going down. So as it was going down, she was getting less oxygen. So they had to get her out. And when they got her out, I did not see my baby. I went to an emergency C-section. When I got out of, out of recovery for 45 minutes, I touched my baby and signed my baby off to Pomona Valley Hospital, which is the city that he stays in. He's right. I did not tell him where my baby was. I know how mental he is. And I feel like I, I don't want that around my child. So when you go see her, I want to be there with you. When I got out the hospital, I called, I called Mr. Butler. He do not answer his phone. I call him again. He do not answer in his phone. I'm not finna keep on calling you. I'm not finna keep calling you. That's what I'm not about Your to Honor, do. That's a lie, Your Honor. She ain't never called me. Yes, she, she did. She ain't never called me and told me that my daughter was at Pomona Valley my Hospital. My daughter now. She never told me that, Your Honor. So at the end of the day, I don't know who baby it is. Um, the, the reason there's another doubt is this picture. Jerome, will you pass me that evidence, please? Oh, that's my, me and my fiance. Like I told you, okay. he stepped up. This is the he same man up. that did that, that. Went she to every doctor's that. appointment. That looks just like him. Went to him. every doctor. No. no, you a liar no, on that they one. Do just no. My fiance oh, my is God. way finer than him, so and knock that off. Not only that, no. Your Honor, the other reason is the baby doesn't carry his last name. Doesn't carry the last name. He, she's never shown him the birth certificate. So. Your concern is that there may be another man listed on the birth certificate. No. Because you've never seen. I have evidence right here. I've never seen that birth certificate the day of my life. Right I here. Asked her about it. Here you go. The day of my life, I never. Jerome, this is the birth certificate. Me it's me and me only. I was the only one there besides my mother. If she would have been, if she could have been listed, I would have listed her as the father. Yes, no father listed. My daughter has name my last name. Blank. 
after Zamara is here. At some point, you do reconnect. Yes, after he made a hospital visit, after my baby had left, then yes, when she turned two months, because there were so many doctor's appointments, including while I was pregnant, I was seeing three doctors at the same time. And he, know, he knows that. He knows that. I so don't know after. Nothing about that, Your Honor. You were nothing. there at one or two nothing. of them? Nothing. Nothing. It was I, there. I never went to none of them doctor's appointments. Wow. None of them. Wow. You've never been to a doctor's probably, appointment? Probably one of them. That's about it. That's about <laughs> it. One of them, Your Honor. One of them. All the rest, I never went to none of them. You wasn't wow. around. You choose not to be around. Wow. That's your baby. I don't see why you don't see it. She do not look like it. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't have to step up. I'm already here. Don't even worry about that. So... At the point you do reconnect him with the child. I go to his auntie house, which he was living, who he was living with at the time in Pomona. I go over there, I take my baby to see him when my baby is two months. They taking pictures, he, this my last dime, this my last baby, um, I wanna be with you, taking her downstairs to see his friends. His auntie say, well, the baby look just like you. This is the first auntie that said my baby looked just like him. Recently, he sent his other auntie, which is his mama's sister, to Victorville as a DNA test. I don't know how she didn't swab or nothing. I guess it's just eye vision. <laughs> she come up there and say, well, I gotta tell you this, taking pictures of my baby and all of that. I gotta tell you this, your daughter looks more like Mr. Butler than any of his other kids. Now, Tell the truth for this one time. other gentleman that I saw in the evidence you submitted, this is the man you believe is Tomorrow, Father. I be. I wish so, Your Honor. I pray to God and I wish that I would have messed with my fiance around the time I got pregnant. I wish he has stepped up in so many ways that Quincy have never been. That never been. They keep me so away as far from as that. as far keep as my daughter lady. calling my fiance uh, dad, I'm going to grant it. How we keep you away? You was I'm just at the house it. two weeks ago. So he was supposed to be there to live. The single point I'm trying to understand is, is it true that you decided you'd maybe go and stay at Ms. Moore's house with Zamar? Were you gonna go over there? Tell the truth, you're on dog? Yeah. So you did. And you thought... And, and was it because you felt like this was your daughter? Yes, I did. You did. Okay. So... It's almost like you've got one foot in and one foot out. Yes, I do. It's, it's, That's because uh, it's being tugged I'm playing, on. I'm playing tug of war, and I'm tired of playing tug of war. If it's come back to be my daughter, I want to see my daughter today, because probably when I leave here, I'm not going to never see her. And what is it you feel like Ms. Moore wanted to be with you, and since that didn't work out, Zamar's her way of getting back at you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no. Yes, ma'am. I've been in tug of war because I felt like she's using up Mike Zamora as a pawn tool to get back with me because truthfully she's unfit and she's half like she uses me as a bait tool. Like she's wanting my money, all type of stuff, Your Honor. So you feel like she's trying to use you? Yes, ma'am. Now, look, we're in court. I have to be honest. This conversation you're having right now, is this something you truly independently feel? Yes, or are these things that you talk about with your wife? Because you're in a difficult position. You may have a baby with one woman and you're married to another woman and they obviously don't get along. They ain't gonna never get along. So, are these things that you feel like, are, is your wife kind of egging these thoughts on? Or are these your independent thoughts? My own thoughts. So now, my last question is, if these thoughts are true, when you get into an altercation with your wife, why do you run to Ms. Moore's house? I don't... Well, I do get in an altercation with my wife, and I run over here to see if this is my baby or not. A year and a half, it's been a tug of war with this baby. All right. Well, I think there's only one way to get to the results. Please. It's to have the envelope. Get it over and get it. Thank you, Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows.
In the case of Moore v. Butler, when it comes to one-year-old Zamara Moore, and as to whether her biological father is Mr. Butler, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Butler. Yes, ma'am. You are her father. Done. Thank you. You completed everything today. You're very welcome, sir. You feel better? Yes, I do. Do you? Yeah. Now you can start being a dad. Mr. Black, you say you're here today to finally prove that you are not the biological father of four-month-old Javion Black. Yes, Your Honor. You say when the results reveal you are not the father, you no longer want the child to have your last name. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Rockmore, you say you are 100% sure Mr. Black is your son's biological father and you are completely disgusted by his rejection of your innocent child. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Black, are you indeed rejecting Ms. Rockmore's child? Yes, Your Honor. And why? Uh, when I met Miss Rockmore, we um, we had sex on the first night. Um, I, I I got to know her, and when I was getting to know her, her ex was still involved, and I believe he still got something to do with her while we was trying to get to know each other. And I don't know what they had going on, but I mean that's one of my doubts. Take me back. How'd you meet her? I met her walking around my apartment complex. She was with some mutual friends. Okay. And I thought she was very attractive, and I talked to her. We exchanged numbers. We got to know each other a little better on that evening, and then we, ex we exchanged, we had sexual contact later on that night. Same night you saw her walking yes, around the parking lot? Yes, ma'am. So was this sex protected? No, ma'am, it wasn't. <sighs> Miss Rockmore, how do you end up having sex with somebody unprotected after you just walking around an apartment yeah, it was complex? Just weird because I really liked the hair. Tell me. It was just more because I really was attracted to him when I first seen him. Like, it was just, I was just instantly attracted to him when I first seen him. Yeah, I shouldn't have had sex with him the first night, but, you know, it happened. So, you, d bottom line is you did and there was no protection used. Yes, Your Honor. Were you having sex with anyone else at the time? No, Your Honor, I wasn't. Were you in a relationship with anybody? No, Your Honor, I wasn't. Mr. Black, so why are you doubtful? She says she didn't even know anybody else have sex with anybody else? She wasn't even dating anybody else. I'm doubtful because at the time I was there and I was talking to her, that, that period of time, I seen her ex involved with her. And so, I mean, I don't know if she's capable of having so sex with me. So you said you saw her with her ex? Yes, ma'am. He walked past me while I was at her house talking to her and he went and took her to the store. How'd you know it was her ex? I knew it was her ex because she told me. That's okay. The last, that's the last so... person she had intercourse with. So, if he came by and they went to the store, what would make you think they were even having sex? Was he just giving her a ride to the store? No, I don't know what it was. It wasn't, it wasn't none of my business at the time. But I mean, you know, I didn't think me and her would have no baby later on. And her and her ex, I don't know what they had going on, but I didn't think we was in a relationship. I thought we was just talking. And so, when you were talking, mm -hmm. was this during the window of conception? Because you were doing more than talking <laughs> since you standing here now. <laughs> Was this during the window of conception? Yes, ma'am. So, I'm trying to understand the doubt, Mr. Black, because you say, I'm doubtful that the child could be mine even though I slept with her during the window of conception without protection because I saw her ex come and they went to the store. <laughs> That's what not a is? good argument for court. I need you to come better than that. Yes, ma'am. What it is, I saw her ex involved in her life. I believe that a man's not gonna be involved in your life unless he's doing something for you and he's expecting something in return. So yes, now well. give me, give me more details. When you say you saw her ex involved in her life, besides this going to the store, what else did you observe? I didn't observe nothing from him because I wasn't around her like that. That's where my doubt come from. I didn't stay with her, I didn't live with her. We okay, hold on. Now see, the story's complex. changing. You just said the reason why you were doubtful is because you saw her ex involved in her life and if someone's doing things for you, they want something in return. Yes, ma'am. But that's... the only thing you witness is them go to the store. Yes, ma'am, but that's her baby daddy. So... So, mm -hmm. could he have been coming to see his child? 
No, ma'am, he couldn't be coming to see his child because his child wasn't in the car with him. His child was nowhere around them at the time I was there. Bottom line is this. You're talking to a girl. Yes, Meaning you all are having a casual sexual relationship or whatever you all doing at that point. Yes, ma'am. So when her ex comes around, is she standing with you before she goes to the store? No, ma'am, she wasn't. I was just there. I was outside. She, t she told me before he came over there, but my thing was, if he's come, why is he coming over here? If I'm your man and supposed to be your man, why are you asking him for something? Why don't you ask me? If you did need something, if you are going to but the store... But you said you were her man. You all were just I know, talking. We, we was talking, but we was getting to know each other. You know, you all not gonna confuse me. I today. need I need loyalty in my now, life. Now, do you? But what, what is she loyal to? You all in? You're not in a relationship. You gotta show me. You, you, loyal, you gotta show she me. She has loyal. a child with this guy, right? Yes, ma'am. So what if they needed to do something for their child? She needed to tell me first. But you're not her. Yes, ma'am. But you're not her boyfriend. No, I'm not her boyfriend. But I'm. If so I'm what does she to be... have to get permission for you? To if go do something to, with her child's father. If she want me to be her man, then she's gonna be loyal to me and let me know everything that go on. So the point is, is you felt like at that point you all were trying to get to know one another. You weren't committed but, yet. Exactly. But in the midst of us getting to know one another, you coming and getting picked up with your ex, and you felt like just keep everything on the table, say, this is my ex. He's coming to pick me up because we need to do blah, blah, blah. Yes, or I'm doing... You felt like there was a little bit too much mystery which made you feel like the lines could be a little blurred. Yes, ma'am. So now, Ms. Rockmore, at some point you find out you're pregnant. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And when you find out you're pregnant, who do you tell? The first person that I told was my mom, and that's because she went to the doctor with me. As soon as I left the doctor, I called, I called Mr. Black to let him know that I was pregnant. And at the time, he didn't believe me until I showed him a sonogram picture. Then that's when he believed me. So, when you heard about the pregnancy, Mr. Black, she says you were doubtful, were you? Yes, ma'am, I was doubtful. It was a month later. I got a calendar showing the time periods of where we had our intercourse and the time period she showed me she was pregnant. She could have had sex with anybody from August to September. Jerome, let me see this. The window of conception, this in green, when you were intimate with Ms. Rockmore, that was pretty much the whole month yes, of July. That's, yes, ma'am. The whole month of July, we was having intercourse, and that's when we met and we were talking. And, I mean, like I said, we didn't talk very long. I thought we was just talking. Once she showed me she was unloyal to me or she wouldn't let me know everything that was going on, I left. I left Palestine, Texas, and I, and I, and I was gone. So, in the blue, it says you moved to Dallas on August the 3rd. Yes, ma'am. And then in red, you see September, you were informed that she was pregnant. Yes, ma'am. And then in yellow, we see the birth date, Javion's birth date, it's the 15th. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna April. add up. So, what exactly are you trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that he is not my child. And how does this calendar help you in that proof? <laughs> it helps me in that way of showing you the time frame that we did have sex. She was on her period from the 21st to the 28th, and we had sex on the 30th one time. And she came to me on the 26th saying that she was pregnant. Between July 30th and, August, and, and September 26th, she could have had sex with anybody. So you're claiming the that the window of conception would have been between July 30th? Yes, ma'am. And when? And I'm gonna say August 3rd. I wasn't around her, Your Honor, all the time. I didn't have to keep my eye on her or watch her. We were just talking. It wasn't that serious, but I wanted her to show me loyalty. So you believe there's no way based on this calendar that you are the father? Yes, ma'am. Ain't no way I can be the father at all. I may not be an OBGYN. Yes, ma'am. I was pretty good at math. Mm -hmm. I'm counting back and I'm saying, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm hmm I land in July. But that's around the same time that her ex was involved. That's around the same time that I was seeing him. Okay, I was just being yes, clear because your testimony yes, said that between saying. the 30th and, and in August, she yes, could have slept with anybody. So I'm saying, but she was sleeping with you throughout the month of July. And that seems yes, to be closer to the window of conception. Yes, ma'am, it is. But, you know, I mean, at the same time, I can't watch her. I can't say who she was sleeping with. If, if I slept with her one day, who's to say somebody else didn't come behind me and hit it, too? And so, 
Miss Rockmore, did he help you at all during the pregnancy? Did he support you? Did no, he come he to doctor's appointment? He didn't help me at all. I went to every doctor's appointment by myself. Thing is, it's like, how can you deny him when you named him? You gave him your middle name. You gave him your last name. So you gave him the last name Black. Did you sign the birth certificate? No, ma'am. I'm not on any birth certificate. But you just gave him the name. I, I didn't give him the name. She gave him the name. I didn't agree to anything. She put my name on a hospital birth certificate. She gave him my name. I'm just doubtful all over, Yana. I mean, all I really wanted to do in, in the beginning was have sex anyway. That's all it was. It was just a one-time thing that happened and, and a baby came out of it, which is a blessing, but at the same time, I need to know if he's mine. I'm not trying to sit here and be paying for somebody's other baby. And so, to date, he hasn't been there for the child. No, Your Honor. So your feeling is, I'm not connecting myself to this child, I'm not contributing a dime, I'm not doing anything that would remotely look like I'm stepping up to the plate as a father for this baby until I know for certain that it's mine. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Rockmore, in your statement to the court, you say it's been difficult. Yes, Your Honor. Very difficult. Tell me about that. I, throughout my whole pregnancy, I was sick to the point where I was in and out of the hospital. I spent days in the hospital. I had to quit my job. You know, just because that's how sick I was. I had to quit my job. I was having to ask my family for money and every, like, everything like that. And so, since he's born, what has it been like? Like, I just recently got a job. So it's been, like, very, very hard. And how are you doing for child care? Because I know that's expensive. Yes, well, my uh, boss, he helps me. He helps me out a lot with the child care. So I've been grateful for that. So I've been doing okay with the child care. And so as you reach out to Mr. Black and talk to him about the child's needs and w this is the kind of responses you're getting every time? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I see you brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, please stand and step up to the podium. And your name? I'm Miss Black. You're Miss Black? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. you Black. are? I'm his mother. You are Mr. Black, the plaintiff's mother? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so I would love to hear what you know about this situation, given the side of the aisle you're standing on. Hey. <laughs> your Honor? Yes. I'm his mom, and I am very disappointed. I'm outraged that he would go this far to bring this young lady to court to prove that's his son. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm here with her because I do believe that's my grandson. I raised my son better than that to degrade women. If you're good enough to lay with that woman, then you're good enough to be there for that woman. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just from the old school. So, come step up to the plate. Do what you gotta do. And so, Ms. Black... Yes, ma'am. Have you developed a relationship with Javion? Have you seen the baby? Of course. Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. I love him. And Aww. he, to me, he's my grandson. Whether he passed the test or not, he looks like my other son. He looks like Richard's three girls. And that's my grandson. Black, how does yes, it feel to hear your mother it feels speak uh, so confidently about the fact that she really believes that's her grandson? Uh, it feels a little bad, but I mean, you know, a mother, you know, a mother. Um, I mean, I feel like she should be on my side just because of the fact that you're she, she, she's mine, she's my mother, but at the same time, that's that's I don't, I can't say. I mean, her being my mom. I mean, we got children. I got three girls. I don't think he looks nothing like my daughters. I don't think he looks nothing like me. I mean, I got a, I got a wife at home. I'm engaged. I don't need these problems. And I'm trying to see if he is mine, if he's not mine, because this has turned up my relationship at home. I'm trying to move forward with my life and what I got going. He's not the only child, if he is mine, that I have. So I got three girls to take care of and him. So, you know, I'm trying to stop all the problems right here today. That's why I came to paternity court. Good, good. And... At this point, I think the only way to move forward is to get the results. Are we ready? Yes, ma'am. But, Your Honor, that could be his first son. You know, that could be his first son, my first grandson. 
And like I say, whether the test reveal it or not, he's still my grandson. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Black v. Rockmore, when it comes to four-month-old Javion Black, it has been determined Mr. Black, you are the father. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, there's a saying that mom knows best. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Feel I'm emotional. So happy. I knew he was my grandson. You know, mothers know. <laughs> But, Your Honor, I had to know for sure. So um, now you have the truth. Yes, Your Honor. What are you going to do with it? Because that's really what this courtroom is about. I'm gonna take How are you going to move son. forward? I'm going to take care of my son and do what I need to do. Good. And I see the tears. You feel emotional because now what yeah. did you just realize in that moment that you have a son? Yes, ma'am. He is mine. I'm proud of him. I'm, I mean, you know, that's my boy. I'm going to take care of him just like I take care of my girls. They all get spoiled. Good. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>